We have a clip from a documentary I produced yeah, on uh, 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 Assange's plight, uh, where he's reflecting on that that video, which made a huge splash and was really WikiLeaks' introduction to the world. I'd like to roll that clip and get like some of his mind. thoughts, and then get you to you know add any meat onto that. So let's roll that real quick. Light them all up. Come on, fire! Video WikiLeaks would title Collateral Murder showed footage from a U.S. Army Apache helicopter of soldiers gunning down more than a dozen people in Baghdad who weren't engaged in active combat, including two Reuters reporters. The video generated international press and controversy. Assange said his intention was to expose the casual carnage and destruction happening in the course of the U.S. war in Iraq. It was the another day at the office. How routine it was, a whole street covered with bodies. The reaction to that was nuts. And so, as we've, you've made very clear in this interview, the, uh, the, the charges against Assange have nothing to do with all these rumors swirling around what happened in 2016. It's about the release of these documents in 2010, uh, including this video. Um, what was the import of the collateral murder video? Well, it really marks a before and an after um, concerning the Bush wars. Uh, this had, It's 2010, right? This actual um, uh, event uh, depicted in the video is, I believe, from July 20, uh, 2007. And so the war had started in 2003. Um, and it had been going for seven years by the time Collateral Murder was released. And by then, there wasn't, you know, much interest in the media anymore. There were embedded journalists uh, traveling, you know, with, with U.S. convoys and going to press briefings by the Pentagon and so on. Um, but there was no real insight. Um, there were just body bags coming back from Iraq. Um, and... Uh, and there was no like real um, uh, news worthiness, let's say, in reporting about Iraq. And then suddenly this came um, down uh, and it had such an impact because it really contrasted with what, uh, with the curated um, uh, information uh, that was coming yeah. through the media. And it, and it, it was, it depicts a war crime. That's, that's what, you see, it's it's not just the gunning down of these individuals to begin with, where uh, um, two Reuters journalists are on assignment and and get killed. One of them crawls, tries to crawl uh, to to cover, and then a van pulls up, and um, two good Samaritans come out of the van and try to um, pick pick up this uh, journalist and then bring him into the van, and then it gets shoot, shot down. Um, and everyone dies except for two children who are um, shielded by the body of their father. Uh, so this is a, a truly horrific um, video, and it's horrific not just because you're watching it, but because you're you're listening to the conversation and the kind of um, uh, uh, jokey. Yeah. conversation like around casual, this and so on yeah. and it's it, it's become um to the iraq war what that picture of the of the napalm girl you know in vietnam um is to the vietnam war the one where she's walking or she's running um naked away for the village that has just been napalmed um it is uh i think chelsea manning has said that it is like in 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 30 minutes you see just the, the concentration, the um, Iraq war in its essence. It's just very telling to me that this is what the U.S. is prosecuting him over, is facilitating the release of undeniably true information about the war that the U.S. was prosecuting so that the people could have a clearer vision of what was going on. And it clearly had an impact on people's view uh, of that war. And for me, Julian Assange is a figure of world historical importance because of what he unlocked with WikiLeaks. I mean, he demonstrated undeniably that the strategic use of technology like encryption 
would be shifting the entire global power structure. And he ushered in that new reality, really. It, it it was the reality that the cypherpunk movement dreamed of, of this world where a small team of hackers and activists can just share information. And even the most powerful governments can't do anything to stop the release of that information. And he pushed it into being and showed a whole generation that maybe resistance to these powerful super states actually isn't futile. And um, if you have the right tools and you know how to use them, you can really change the world. And I think that might be a big part of why he's a marked man more so than his alleged crimes. Um, but is there anything else to say that you want to say as we're wrapping up about his significance as a cypherpunk or kind of his place in history? Um, well, I think um, Julian is a, is a visionary and a pioneer, as you say. Uh, his writings and his speeches, many of his speeches or, or clips have gone viral uh, on the internet, you know, in relation to Ukraine, for example, he was talking about Afghanistan, but um, his kind of big picture analysis and uh, criticism of, of the um, drivers of war, the true drivers of war, um, have uh, currency now. And in fact, you know, I, I uh, often go back to things that he wrote 10 years ago um, because they are they have stood the test of time. And, um, you know, he is he is a, a, a global um, figure and um, a thinker of our times and the type that that uh, is is direly needed. Um, so, you know, Julian has to be freed, not just because this is uh, an enormous injustice and the, the precedent it sets um, affects journalists everywhere in the US, um, but also globally, um, it's an extreme overreach. It uh, criminalizes uh, the publication of true information um, of the highest public importance, but also because of Julian's uh, position as a public intellectual and of someone who promotes uh, truth and um, and is a critic of of war um, and uh, just I'm not sure when this is airing but um, there's a a house resolution currently um, which is being pushed which has been uh, tabled, I think that's the word they use in the US, mm -hmm. I don't know, by Paul Gozar, um, mm -hmm. that says, um, expressing the sense of House, the House of Representatives, that regular journalistic activities are protected under the First Amendment, and that the US ought to drop char all charges and attempts to extradite Julian Assange. Yes, and there, there's also a, uh, a letter that's been signed by multiple congressmen, and including Thomas Massey, who we interviewed last week, uh, asking Biden to do the same thing, to drop the extradition. So to, to right. wrap this up, can you tell me, like, are you optimistic that there will be some sort of shift in the political winds, that this some something can change for Julian's case? Like, how are you feeling at the end of the day here? Well, I think that um, politicians that actually take the time, or at least their um, their staffers that take the time to look at this case, will immediately understand the dangers and the un-American nature. I mean, really, the, the First Amendment is something that is quite unique in the world, and it defines the political culture of the United States, which is much more open and dynamic than other parts of the world, Europe, for sure. Um, and this case is actually kind of a, 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 a more Europeanized, more um, mm. not to talk down Europe too much, but it is uh, no, totalitarian do. in its nature. And it changes, it shifts the political culture and it has to be reversed. And I think any, um, you know, the vast majority of uh, politicians that look at this case seriously will be, will understand uh, that the dangers of this case, that it should never come uh, to pass, um, that the case should be dropped. And I'd ask uh, any viewers to contact their representatives and ask them to support any efforts to drop the case against Julian.
Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our new show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. New episodes drop every week, so subscribe to Reason TV's YouTube channel to get notified when that happens, or to the Just Asking Questions podcast on Apple, Spotify, or any other podcatcher. See you next week.